Thank you, and thank you for uh, the opportunity to present. I'm glad to be here. Can you, everybody see everything? Yeah, perfect. So I'm uh, the co-founder of Sesame Solar. We make mobile solar nanogrids with solutions inside for a variety of vertical markets. Next slide. Uh, and our whole mission is to make solar deployments quick and easy. Uh, we try to get them able to be set up by one person in less than 15 minutes uh, with a minimum of training to help solve the ubiquity barrier of solar. Next slide. So a little bit about the company. We're about four years old. We're a majority woman-owned small business. Uh, we have a variety of solutions ranging from TRL uh, three to seven, but most are in the five or six. And we have a Lego block type model. So there are many configurations and solution partners that we can deploy. So everything from uh, disaster preparation, rapid response, mobile medical clinics, uh, command centers, offices, we can do mobile laboratories, laundries, we pretty much put anything inside. Uh, we have an experienced leadership team who've worked together before and brought this where we are today, scalable supply chain partners and multiple solutions partners. We've got significant traction. We have right now about $3 million in orders in hand. Uh, and that's just July. So we think we're gonna have a great year. And we have deployed widely to commercial customers, most, most uh, significantly in the telco and broadband space, and then in some Caribbean applications. And we're just beginning our DOD uh, opportunities. Next slide. So what you're looking at now is a Sesame Solar Nanogrid in operation. Uh, the walls open up, that's the name Open Sesame and the solution is inside. In this case, this is a mobile crisis response office. This particular solar nanogrid has 10 kilowatts of solar generation and 68 kilowatts of lithium ion battery storage. It has a diesel generator backup, but we increasingly are gonna be moving to hydrogen fuel cell. And in fact, we also can help with the creation of hydrogen through electrolysis powered by solar. And so we can create a closed loop for complete fuel independence of self-generated hydrogen, hydrogen backup and the solar. Uh, and we can do mobile wind turbines as well, any kind of cogeneration. Next slide. So our sweet spot in the market is $3 billion, the under 100 kilowatt hours, though we can do more when we cluster them. And again, it's all about make, shipping it ready to use, ready to deploy. Next slide. Uh, we have a patent pending. Next slide. Uh, we really are focused on mobile solar power. And as I said, our secret sauce is ready to use. Here you're looking at um, our kind of dual axle trailer platform, which could be towed behind a standard truck. Next slide. Or as we've seen, uh, ISO shipping container can go on a flatbed. And we have gotten product market fit with our disaster prep and rapid response uh, solutions. Next slide. Uh, you can cluster these and we could actually create a mini grid to respond to emergencies. Next slide. And this particular one is one we have for uh, Cox, which is a uh, towable communications and command center. Uh, they've got multiple ones of those. Uh, next slide. Any kind of office create inside, medical office, command center. Uh, it's all flexible, different components to make different office solutions. We use standard components. Next slide. We can do water filtration, water generation, and have done that in the Caribbean. Next slide. We have uh, a refrigeration partner for full uh, scale com uh, refrigeration, commercial walk-in for food security. Next slide. And we uh, have all kinds of medical clinics and medical applications from mobile to semi-permanent. Next slide. And we can do all kinds of EV charging, EV top up, where not only can we provide the external power, but we can also house the smaller components. Interesting for a lot of the micro mobility products. And we're talking with some of those partners. Next slide. So really our value proposition is to make solar deployments quick and easy. It's all about one person can set it up at the matter of minutes with very little training, very little maintenance required. These are durable tested for extreme weather, though we're looking with DOD to further ruggedize to meet the needs of DOD applications. They're uh, flexible for a variety of applications, and most importantly, they're mobile, so they can be put on the back of a 
towed by a truck or a, on a train, ship, cargo plane, or helicopter. And the ROI is, you know, solar power is increasingly at least equal to the cost of diesel and total cost of ownership, uh, but of course has all the benefits over time and lives saved of not transporting diesel. So next slide. Okay, um, 30 second warning. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. done. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying to turn my alarm off here. So there you go. Uh, it's not working. Anyway, thank you and uh, ready to answer your questions. We make solar simple and easy. Thank you, Lauren. This is amazing. I loved it. <laughs> um, I was just wondering uh, who, who's, who are, who's your market? Basically, who are you talking to sell this? Is it cities? Is it not for profits? Have you talked to utilities, especially in California? Yeah, so we sell really through three kind of channels. One is a global resellers. We have Intersys, which is one of the largest uh, battery companies, power companies in the world, is selling through to the telcos. We've sold through to four of theirs so far, Cox, Charter, Mediacom, and Comcast. Uh, we are selling uh, through NGOs. We've worked with Direct Relief, and we've worked with them in the Caribbean. Uh, we are selling direct to government, DOD. Uh, so those are kind of our different channels. Uh, we actually have just sold a number to the telcos in California who are responding to PSPS power shortages and need to have backup power. And we're providing that. We just uh, have, you know, about 42 of them that are under construction right now. So uh, that's definitely our markets. And so we sell through those partners and we are principally the innovator designer, you know, coming up with the technology. And then we have solutions partners who, it's a two-way solution. So for example, our refrigeration partner is re trying to resell us in Africa for electrification of small villages to secure the food chain. Uh, and, you know, we have other kinds of partners like that that resell our solution where we're the power envelope. Excellent, thank you. There's a lot of people that I know will be interested in these solutions, so I will reach out. Lauren at sesame.solar, love to talk with you. Awesome. This is Diana Grauer with Technip. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about uh, how many units you've got, where they are, are they deployed? What's the maintenance cycle? Are you doing that? Is somebody else doing that? Um, can you talk a little bit more to that? Sure. So. Uh, we've got a couple of units that were early prototypes from before this company was officially formed that are at a mining company in Brazil, and they're still working great six years later, and they do their own maintenance. Through our resellers like uh, Intersys, they do the maintenance and first-line support. We've got a couple of units in the island of Dominica working fine over the last couple of years. Uh, Cox and Charter, or Cox and Comcast each have a couple of units. They're working great. Intersys is their support. We just have these 42 we're building now. Uh, they'll be, we're the second line of support. That's the advantage of the reseller channel. We support them as they support their customer, but this is deliberately high tech, low tech. We use a lot of standard components that are easy to replace. The, the, the genius, if you will, is in how to combine that to make it easy to use, rapid to deploy with no additional construction. So that maybe uh, to follow up on that, I guess I'm, I, I love the packaging and I, I can see, especially coming from California, um, a whole lot of really interesting emergency response applications, but it, it seems, I guess that one question is what's the, other than the great packaging and the integration, is there a secret sauce here that differentiates and creates barriers to entry? And then the other question really comes down to price can folks whether they're private or public or what have you afford to keep this capacity on hand pending the earthquake or the wildfire or what have you sure great questions so we do have utility patent pending on a very broad patent covering the notion of you know this completely self-contained package whose walls open up to have a solution and all the components in there uh, we're adding to that. We have a number of new designs. I can't talk about those, but 
We will continue to build out our IP. We have manufacturing art. What we do is actually quite difficult and trade secrets. That's a very important part of the IP. And then the innovation, coming up with these kind of Lego block solutions in a scalable way. We spent our first couple of years thinking, how do you productize this? Because we didn't want to be in the business of making custom units. We wanted to be able to make stuff out of standard components. Um, what was the second part of your question? Was pro oh, price. Yeah, price. so price, yep. the go big model is raise a very large pool of capital, stand side by side capital that will finance a, a rental pay go models. And there's, uh, you know, predicates for that, for example, scale microgrids, which is natural gas and solar. They build very big ground mounted systems. They've got a 300 million line from Warburg Pincus. There's a lot of attractive capital for that because you've got solar tax credits, rapid depreciation, revenue share, and ultimately resale. And so you can have a pretty nice uh, return on that pool of capital fairly securely. So that's the go big plan. We've got to test out that model. We've got to be able to find out, you know, is FEMA really willing to sign five-year agreements for, you know, in advance of hurricane or wildfire time to have a number of units ready to be deployed in advance need. We do have that go big plan, but right now we're, you know, we have a nice gross margin. We are cash positive because we collect all the money before we ship and we sell it out. So we haven't had to raise much capital. We've been able to move forward on about a million of capital. So we've been extremely capital efficient um, and, you know, we'll be profitable this year. Okay. I, I just, I was listening to your presentation and coming from a utility background, I'm, especially a California utility background, I'm wondering whether this is part of a, a utility of the future uh, energy or in, more technically capacity as a service sort of a model. Where, Absolutely. You know, That's what I call pay go. Energy as a service is another way to do it. But if we're doing water, it could be per liter of water or if it's uh, we're doing EV charging, it's per kilometer or per mile. If we're doing refrigeration, it's per you know half hour, hour of service. So you can price those pagos in the unit economics that makes sense for their geographies. If you can cover the capex and you have that kind of pago model, then that'll cover the operating expense. But absolutely for utility, they should be deploying these everywhere in California, all in the remote areas. And you know it's an energy as a service funded over time. We're we're trying to talk to the folks there, but you know. <laughs> It's challenging. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm just thinking about um, that a utility rate base may be a very efficient way to, to build capacity that would be then available when it's needed. I agree. It just is a lot of red tape when you're doing that. One of our great advantages is yeah. we ship it. Boom, 15 minutes, you're up and running. No permits, no, no nothing. You're just ready to go. And that that's part of the off grid benefit. As soon as you go in with utilities, you have all these policies and regulations and you slow the whole process down. But to go big, I agree, that's a, that's a key component. 